by August 7th that went to the county governor stating our intention of uh, going on the ballot for an open bond, for a bond to uh, purchase an open space or conservation easement. And what David and uh, Randy Gorson has done is prepared the documents that uh, outlines the the procedure and what we have to adopt in order to meet the guidelines. And on the first page of the uh, resolution, or the second page it is, it uh, spells out the resolution and what will be on the ballot. Is that not correct? Yes, the resolution. So, uh, good afternoon, Lewis, uh, David Robertson from Lewis and Robertson Burning Habitat Advisor. Yes, that resolution just enables uh, the county to put this uh, item on the ballot. So, you're not approving anything, you're not necessarily saying you're I forward or against it, you're simply allowing the electorate then to, to, to vote on this on the November ballot. The reason we have to do this now is you have to go through the approval process that has to be a resolution by the county council to get this on the ballot. Uh, you have to do uh, make mention to the, the governor's office uh, by the 23rd of August. And so we wanted to bring it up uh, for discussion today so we could take, uh, if the county council wanted to, to take action uh, sometime in one of their August meetings uh, to get that notice uh, to the governor, uh, to get, to, sorry, to the lieutenant governor to get this on the uh, on the ballot in, in November. So this is more of a timing issue. August 7th. August 7th, is to the Lieutenant Governor's office, isn't it? Uh, it's my understanding it's the August 23rd, it says here. Oh, okay, good. So Do you have read, make sure you get a copy of this. Now, I have a quick question for you. We were told the 7th. Uh, we uh, the seventh. So I know the county voted and it was a split, or the council voted it was a split, but is this the only way this item can be on the ballot? Is if this county, if this legislative body sponsors it? You have to approve a resolution that sends it to the ballot in, in November. Correct? So there's no other way a, a group of citizens doing a re, uh, some sort of ballot initiative could not get this on the ballot. Uh, at this point, at this point, it would be a. But this I can't point, say at this point or this November. Yeah, okay, well, that's my question. Say it wasn't this November. Is there another process that this can go on? Um, I'm not a legal expert, um, just knowing the general process, I'm assuming that if the residents got a certain number of signatures, uh, I, would, I would imagine that there would be a, a process to get there, but I'm not an expert, I can't say Okay, that. I thought that maybe you knew off the top, because we had a lengthy discussion about this, and there was lots of folks saying there was no yeah. other way to do it that. It was shared when we did that, I thought the date, they said there's no way because the date, it wasn't in office, that didn't think, maybe it was. Well, to get it on this November's ballot, uh, this is the process. This is the process. <clears throat> and so, yeah, I apologize. Randy uh, Larson, Bond Council, couldn't be here. He was having another meeting, so we're texting this. And so, we wanted to bring this today. This isn't, um, as uh, Mr. Farrell mentioned, that there's uh, there's some highlighted blank language in here. We want to get the resolution in front of the council to, to look at this. Um, we, there may be some uh, some suggestions to massage the language. Uh, to go, that would be the ballot language, and it's how to mention that and what the number should be exactly. Uh, but I wanted to get this in front of you today so that if you did want to bring this to uh, on the council agenda in, in August, that you could approve it without approval and can move forward with that, on that. Is this, is this official ballot proposition, the language, is that pretty tied down? That's probably the outline. Uh, there are some, there are some, definitely some uh, requirements that have to go in there. Um, but the actual language, um, are you on the, the last page there? I'm on page eight. It's showing what the sample ballot is, what it'll be on the ballot. Yes, and so there's some of that you can uh, you can massage that a little there's bit. Some blanks for money, some out yeah. and such. Yeah. So we would want to get uh, some input from um, bond council on how that should be exactly. I'm wondering, you got here property tax cost of bond. He's got over 21 years estimated so much per year on a blank residence. That's where you put the value. Like it'd be so much a year on a $300,000. Is that where that goes? 
Yeah, but we've run some different numbers based on a 10 or 15 million dollar transaction. If you wanted to break it up into three three increments, uh, we can reach all those. So that isn't necessarily cut and dry yet either. No. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we can we can close that deal. Anything further for us? Any questions for Rob? One thing uh, in talking with Randy, we, we talked about going on three $5 million increments over a 15-year period. Randy indicated a bond will only uh, be for 10 years, or bond approval is only for 10 years. So we'd, uh, we're going to either have to, if we want to do $15 million, we'd have to do $7.5 million for the first year and $7.5 million. <laughs> Or reduce the amount down to ten. I thought it was a five million five million increment total for fifteen years. Well the that's what he just said. That's what he just said. Well the authorization, the resolution of so when you get the approval from the voters, you have a ten year period of time to issue those bonds. All all three of them. Whatever yes. So whatever you want. you want. So we could do the first five million at year one, the second five million at year five, and the third at year nine and a half. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's that's what I was getting at. But it there's nothing that specifies when we draw those. No, but they they have under this authorization we have to Within draw 10. all 15 million in 10 year period. If you decide to draw, right? So yeah. let's say let's just go to the scenario that Brian discussed. In the first year you do five, and then say three and a half years later you say this is not working, then you're not required to draw the other two. Right. Or the other ten total. Or if the need was there, I guess you could draw well, fifteen. Or you could draw ten the next. The right. ten the first two or three years, right? Yeah, whatever increments you want to. And then in here right now, it does say that uh, you'll repay the bonds within a twenty-one. So you, you have to have the bonds over a twenty-year period of time. So well, within that. Even year. even if you didn't do the third five and the nine and a half years, that would be twenty-one yeah. years from that time. Yes. From when it was drawn. From when you issue the bond, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you, the reason you so I'm sorry. from when the bond is from that piece of the bond, not the first one, each individual piece. And the reason we say 21 years is you you do it like 20 year amortization. So you have 20 uh, principal payments, but it's just like let's say you issued the bonds in April, but they matured on October. So technically, it's 20 and a half years. So they do 21 years just to kind of cover that odd, odd period of the first year. But then to make sure that it's very clear with what Kendall said, each one of those instruments would start at 21 year clock. Yes. For each individual piece. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So uh, we have this on for our next regular meeting, correct? We have this on for next week, if I'm not mistaken. Or we can. Yeah, I, well, we talked about it last week, so we it's all on for, for the 25th. And as we have today, the 7th. Well, it's the 7th, but it, mm -hmm. it's the 23rd now. It's so, your pleasure. So whatever, well, in our, for our I think the reason we did that is because our, our meeting on the 1st is going to need to be very brief. And so, and does it require another public hearing, or is it just a decision from the council to move the, the, the ball line? It's a decision from the council to approve the ball line. So what are you talking the 23rd? Next week, week from today. 25th. Yeah. So we had put it on there as we discussed last week, if I'm not mistaken. So be aware that it will be on. By that time, we'll need those blanks filled in with the amounts, correct? Yes, we so we back and uh, I want to get ready. We know about, but we'll need to have that nailed down if that's what we're going to vote on, correct? Mm -hmm. yep. Is that, Mr. Chairman, questions? I missed last week. Maybe you can refresh my memory on this one. So if we agree to put this on the ballot in November, we're going to vote. So do you want to put it on the ballot? We, we voted split. It was a split vote, right? To that we were going to sponsor this ballot initiative. It's like seven to three, one, nine, something like that. Four, three. Four, three. I mean, yeah, four to three. Okay, so it is moving forward. <coughs> I'm just gonna approve the uh, language. For My that. guess is if, if, the, if the vote didn't carry to approve the language or to move forward, then it would, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that it would not move forward, but I don't know how that works. If someone changed their mind, decided they didn't want to move forward with it, could they vote not to yeah, if the council doesn't approve it by majority, it doesn't go to the ballot. That's my understanding. What? Even though we've already voted that 
moved it to the back. We, but it was our intention. It was an intent. You know, we didn't say okay. absolutely it had to be this year. Okay. No, and that's kind of how it was presented. Is that the majority decided it was? It was. We were willing to. The majority was willing to move forward with it. Okay. Right. But there was. But at any time, if that majority shifts, as we look at the numbers, I guess then it just dies. But remember, the vote was that we would move forward on this election cycle or the next. No, it wasn't limited to just this year. on the 2000. Yeah. We'll need some clarification for our next meeting. So we know. If we're going to vote on this again, we need some clarification to see what the motion says. Yeah, this is a general election, and next year would not be a general election. Okay. So yeah, but just to be clear, if you approve this resolution, it's, it'll go to the ballot in November. And the Sponsored by the county, by us. Right? That's the only way that it can get on at this point. So if it's right. Right. seven as representatives right. of, the, of, the, of the... Not being a, an electorate yeah. expert yet, that's my understanding. If it had gone through a, a, a signature process to get on the ballot, the council would still have to approve the language. Yep. So yep. That's, uh, we would still have to do this step. Yep. Yeah. I think part of um, our open lands board what we were hoping to discuss today was some of your ideas on what you think should be on the ballot you're looking at those empty spaces in that bonding wording and I think we'd like to hash out some of your thoughts on it because we're not saying this is how it has to be if you believe it should be 15 million then that's what you vote on. If you believe 10 million makes more sense because we have to issue it within 10 years, we're willing to have that discussion, but I think that was what part of this work meeting was hopefully going to be, if I'm not mistaken, is to have that discussion now so that we all kind of have a feeling of what we should come back to you with with bond wording so that we're not having that discussion next meeting. Does that make sense? Perfect. Let's go down the I think there's two other issues on that. We need to determine the term of the bond. We have the option of going 20th every year. Right, Davis? For repayment. Right, yeah, right now there's uh, 21, 20 years. Yeah, but I think that reason we had to do the 20 year amortization and the 30 year amortization. And everyone should have a copy of the uh, what it would cost per uh, ten-year bond at twenty years, and a ten-year bond at thirty, and a fifteen-year bond at twenty, and a fifteen-year bond. At hey, well, like, why don't we? Since we're no action, discussion only. Why don't we start with, if you're okay, Mr. Peterson, we got some thoughts you'd like to share at all, and we'll just kind of down the road, and, and the folks here will know where we, how we feel. Like you mentioned, I think last time we voted on it was 43, and I was one of the threes, and I don't think that's changed at all. Um, I think there's other ways that we can get open space. I'm all for open space. I like that. Every time we turn around, we're always you know, asking the taxpayers to increase their taxes. Like we, we want this, we want that, our taxes continue to go up. So I'm not in favor of this. I'm not saying I would go 15 or 10. I would just still vote no on the whole thing. I'd, I'd probably go for the 15 in the fact that I think we can use this as a tool. We've seen when when property owners try to do something with the property, the opposition we have, and it's been indicated by a number of surveys and the vote that was taken in the north field that people want to keep the open space. So I think this gives them an opportunity to put their money where they uh, want to spend it. And uh, it becomes another tool for the property owners to get some benefit out of the property. I don't have any real opinion on the amount, I guess. I mean, the committee came with 15. I guess that's what they assumed they needed. Uh, as with Councilman Peterson, I was one of the three that voted no. Uh, not that I'm opposed to open space or otherwise, but I, my thought at the time, and that hasn't changed, was that this should be put on by the general public, not the county council. It's, it's their issue. It's, I mean, not that we're opposed to it as a council either, but it's their issue. And I, I think we can demonstrate that as a council, we're 
in favor of open space because we require it in every subdivision we build, we require a certain percentage. So we're not, definitely not a post open space, but for something like this, I think the general public could be the one to put it on. Mr. Good. You know, I agree with both sides on it because Kendall's point, or Councilman Kendall's point about this should be driven from the general public and Councilman Peterson's point about there's other ways to do it. I think there are other ways. But what Councilman Farrell has been talking about for a number of years is that this is just one tool to put in the toolbox. And quite frankly, what, what pushed me to put this on the agenda for us to vote on, to either put it on the ballot or not, was the final straw for me was the, um, that building that Carl Malone tore down. It was an old building. It was a building that I had looked at to purchase, to use for, for my business, and I couldn't use it. So, all right, I didn't use it. A couple of years go by, Carl Malone buys it, they tear it down because they had some other uses for it. And there was this big outcry from the public. And so I'll finish the metaphor that Steve started, is that it's time for the public to put their money where their mouth is. If no one ever came to us and said, hey, why don't you raise our taxes so we can purchase that type of property or purchase open space? It was just always deny everybody the property rights with no skin in the game. So to me, the opportunity for the public to have a say, look, we're gonna, we're gonna pay for the open space uh, or we're not, I think that they just need to have that option on the ballot. So to me, the amount and the terms, I'm flexible with that. We can discuss that as we go. But it's just time for, for this issue, I think, to come to a head to the public. Um, I think that everyone agrees, and there's a very vocal minority, I think, is making a lot of noise about this. But I think that everyone agrees that part of the essential character of, of this county and of this valley is the rural nature, is the open space. And so I think it's very important to protect it. But, um, Tracy, I think I, I disagree with what you said earlier. I feel like as far as specifics of how the money should be spent or what it should be done really needs to come from the experts, and that's from the advisory board. I don't pretend to be an expert on, on how we should do it, but I, I think there have been some great, uh, great opinions stated here, but I feel like it's important to preserving the character of our valley, and that's why I voted for it. I guess I'm in the same boat that I was before. We have a, a county, Wasatch County, is very open just by ownership. State and federal lands, P-160, hundreds of thousands of acres of P-160, mountain zone. Anything five acres up to 20 is also upper 90s percent open, uh, even after it's built upon. So we're not in the same boat as some of our surrounding cities who are running out of open space. We have a lot of open space just by, by by nature, and I think if the county is going to sponsor a multi-million dollar general obligation initiative, which should come with a list of priorities. Do we want to spend that on law enforcement, law enforcement wages, fire and EMS, essential services, that kind of thing, or open space? If we're gonna do that as a body, we should give the options as well. There's lots of things that require our tax dollars, lots, as we sit here and know that maybe some of the general public don't don't understand what we're facing that way. So in my mind, general obligation, tax dollars, uh, we need to be very careful how we spend that and, and view corridor at the end of the day may not be on my top of my priority list for, for the folks I think I represent. So that's where I'm at. You know, it's been, been very interesting to me as I've been along with Councilman and feel like we were the only two making the decisions, I guess, but take a lot of flack in social media about an action that the council has been working on. We now have our second referendum in on that same or attempt, the first attempt failed uh, on, on a change and the dishonesty and whatnot that was portrayed as they were to get those signatures. Uh, and I, I said, looked and I said, okay, we got, and Councilman McFeedman mentioned view corridors and it's like the sacred North Fields. Nobody seems to say anything about these 
open space between here now and north, and the 600 homes that Beaver City is considering putting in there. I posted a, a thing on social media, and I said, what, what, what about the acreage around Memorial Hill that's now getting turned in? I don't know how many homes by Midway. Uh, and it touches the North Fields. Isn't that valuable open space? And, you know, as we look at open space, uh, I'm not opposed to it. We've got 70% off the public land around the county, not counting what's in the city and the county developments and whatnot. So, you know, we'll see. it'll be interesting to see what the public does with this bond, but uh, we don't have a shortage of open space. It seems like we select what we want to preserve some, somewhere. Okay, thank you. So that kind of gives everybody an idea where the council sits and hopefully that helps let you all know where we are. Yep. And then I, uh, Mr. Park obviously isn't here today, so he was the he was one of the four that was in favor of moving this forward. So uh, any other questions for I was going to ask about, have, has this committee uh, coordinated with the Midway Committee at all? What, what's going on there? Are they going to run a ballot too? Do you know? They're going to run a about initiative for five million dollars. Uh, the team point. They're looking at what the cost of this bond would be and what the cost of everything would be for something to keep in the agreements. And you you I asked you what says that comparison they made on that Facebook post is the numbers match what we've got here today pretty well. Pretty well yes. Okay. okay. That's one of the thoughts instead of the property tax but if you Increase the uh, sales tax by four percent. I'm not sure legally a county can increase the sales tax. You know? It's not a county. About you know, the legislative agreements. Can I confirm? And if it's if you uh, if you wanted me to go make a call to make sure um, if it was only by the legislative bodies. Approval. This gets on the on the ballot for uh, November. I can make a quick call and step out and come back to you. We're going to do. That's fine. We're pretty informal today. We're in a work session, so if you want to, that'd be great. You can let us know as we we'll move on to our next item. I think that's the case. Yeah, uh, just from the sheer timing, I did. Yeah, you have to you have to notice uh, 75 days before. So yeah, at least uh, if it was going with the petition, they would have had to have the petition in uh, a month and a half. Well, that's, that's what, what we were told when we voted before, was that the timeline wasn't there to get the petition in. Right. Well, with all due respect on this item, I know we're coming in. There are a lot of a lot of people who have worked very hard on this, and we owe them the respect and, and, and gratitude that they've earned working on this. I know we did transfer belt and rights years ago, and that just had been something that worked out. A lot of people worked hard, and I we all we all agree we want to keep our beautiful valley. Um, so even if we, I appreciate the civility and the fact that we can agree to disagree here. So move forward, Jim. Yes. I can just make one more comment. I think that you said something quietly, but it's very important and, and bears repeating as part of this consideration, and that is that the council has before it a lot of other potential tax increases that are coming up next year that have to do with the of growth of the county and so this is connected to that because that's a that's a burden that uh, decisions that will be made later this year okay thank you so just thank for clarity for my simple mind <laughs> well you're just you're in good company <laughs> uh, I guess I'll take it I'll take it for everyone else uh, do you want us to massage this language, um, put in the 15 million, and bring it back? So does the council want to consider this at the next meeting or in August? Uh, so I just want to be on our side, be prepared for your your pleasure. I think you have to put it in. I mean, I think that decision the council will have to make on the 25th. Okay. I would say we put in the max, and then if the council wants to make a decision that's less than that or not at all, they'll have that opportunity. But we'll, we should put it in at the 15. And then obviously, I'm not in favor, of, but I think if, if we the majority has voted to move it forward, we ought to do the max that was allowed. And then if in that action we take in our next regular meeting, we can adjust that as, as however the majority sees fit. Is that fair? Uh, is it, is it flexible, the, uh, the term? 
75 days, and so that's the statutory limit. You have to make note for 75 days. And there's other days in between of the some information, but the initial day is 75 days before. Um, Brent, maybe you can help get so some clarification before well, next week. We'll have it on, and then we'll know if there's any wiggle room or an extra meeting in, in between the deadline. I'm sorry to track it out. You're getting longer, but are good. One more. Amplified what you said. I think that's going to be well, potentially on the ballot. The, the choice. Um, well, we're going to have to do a truth in taxation if we do an increase for public. We know we're going to do an increase for uh, the county's general budget for um, for the school resource offices. And so there's a potential that those items could be referred to the ballot as well, where the general public would have an uh, option between the priorities. So, like, what happened before? Like, we, yeah. six years ago, we But the truth in taxation doesn't want to file it. That just goes to no, the I think it's potential for it to be referred to. Oh. Because remember what happened when the tax increased two times back, it was going to be referred to the ballot. <coughs> you mean because of the petition? Referendum. Right, right, right. So there's a, there's a potential for the general public to get to face that priority. I just don't know that they'll see it the way that what you're saying. It won't be clear, black and white. You get a choice of fire increase, you get a choice of resource officers, you get a choice of, I think that's what you're saying is what you're kind of a little frustrated about. Yeah, I am very, because a lot of people don't understand the challenges that face that. We don't have huge meetings and committees and different things. It's decisions we have to make on behalf of the people who elected us, whether or not to hold a mill levy in place or not. We have public hearings, we're televised, but we just don't have the same push. So, so they may or may not understand and they're dependent on us to make those best decisions and if i'm the guy responsible prioritizing for for the folks who elected me then that's that's why i think where i'm lots of lots of issues to consider but then i do think that's all part of the conversation that needs to be understood by everyone is that here's a potential and i think we will be asking for an increase for fire we are asking for an increase in this there's a big change for 